Hello everyone, welcome to the Pink and YouTube channel. I'm Connor Southwell, Norwich City reporter for the Pink and you, you will have just seen, or you can just see, uh, a, an exclusive interview with Stuart Webber. Um, if you go onto our channel, I'll also link it in, in the description for you here. Um, reflecting on Norwich City's relegation, which of course got confirmed on Saturday with that 4-0 uh, defeat to West Ham United, which I'm sure isn't the way that Daniel Farker and his squad would have bowed out. I was just going to give you a quick video from the inside of my car. Sadly, it's not a Ferrari. Um, don't worry. Um, and I am parked. So that's that's a, a, another point to make before we, we get into it. But I was uh, filming the interview you just saw. Uh, Paddy will have been asking the questions. If you haven't seen it, I would suggest you go and see it before you watch this video because otherwise not a lot of what I'm going to say will, will make sense or, or resonate to you. Um, it's just my thoughts on some of his comments on um, perhaps his mood in general. Um, it, it was interesting. I think when, when someone comes out and has to front up against relegation, as we've seen Daniel Farker do every week uh, on the press conference, and um, this this was in, an interview filmed in person. It was done via social dis all the current social distancing restrictions, etc. Um, whenever you you get a, a club spokesperson front up to it it's it's always very interesting i think to hear their thoughts and and their reflections on perhaps what has gone right and what's gone wrong it was interesting that stuart weber essentially um decided to move blame away from daniel farker and the players and onto himself stated the the poor recruitment i think he used the exact phrase we went into war without a gun which is um which is quite an interesting expression reiterated um norwich's desire to obviously try and push back next season and get promoted. But obviously, of course, the ambition and, and the long-term ambition of the football club is to be in the top 26 of English football, which is obviously the Premier League plus the, the top six. So uh, minimum a, a playoff place, you would imagine, is the expectation for next season. Interesting stuff on the finances as well. Pinkin.com, you can read all of his quotes and um, Paddy's analysis to sit alongside that. But interesting to me, he, he spoke about ensuring that Norwich now use their financial stability and he described them as being in the best financial state they've been in essentially since he'd been there although there is a 20 million pound hole they're going to have to fill because of COVID-19 and, and this current crisis and obviously the longer it goes on without fans being in stadiums the more we are going to um, we're going to see Norwich City hit um, but he did say that they were in a position this summer to go and invest in what he described as better quality of young players. Whereas before they were trying to find perhaps a bit more bang for their buck. This time it was almost if, if you go on to a scale, they could go up the scale. I think we've seen that with the Dennis Mann rumours, um, which he certainly addressed. Uh, Pinkin.com, of course, is, is the place to go and have a look at that. Um, and of course, the video. But essentially what we're going to see, I think, from Norwich City in a recruitment wise is still the same philosophy, young, hungry talent, but perhaps see them depart with bigger transfer fees and this doesn't mean that they're going to go out and spend 10 million pounds or, or whatnot they'll still be fairly modest he reiterated they wouldn't be the highest spenders in the championship next season but they would be willing to depart with more money because of the position they're in and likewise um, there are going to be players that they wish to move on and all of that is going to be on their terms which leads me on to the next point which was obviously about young players um obviously Norwich you got a fair few of those Aaron's Lewis uh Godfrey Buendia um Campwell of course so there, there are a number of young players that are going to be in demand and he reiterated that Norwich aren't very easy to negotiate with essentially um because um well, the James Madison deal is is the benchmark, really. Uh, twenty million pounds. They 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 or in the in the region of twenty million pounds plus uh, for James Madison they sold, and um, it's going to take a fee, if not of that, certainly above that, to uh, to to allow Norris to negotiate. And he essentially said, if someone is going to ring us up, they have to ring us up with a serious offer. Um, and of course, they've got the the homegrown tag on them. A lot of them, bar maybe Buendia. Um So. Again, all on Norwich City's terms. He actually described the players and their agents as very sensible people, said they wouldn't push for a move. So we'll we'll see what transpires this summer. But I, I get the feeling it's it's going to be very a very active summer for Norwich City, both in and out. Um, of course, they've they've got four, three or four signings lined up, uh, ready to go already. Uh, uh, Stuart Webber confirmed that today. Also working on a few more in the background. So this is even prior to the season ending. They've they've got plenty of irons in the fire in terms of new recruits. Um, 
and it, it feels like the chapter, they're keen to move on the narrative very, very quickly. And I think what you'll see from Norwich pretty much as soon as the final whistle blows at the Etihad to mark the end of their Premier League season is a refresh, is a right, we go again. The narrative changes, the objective changes and whether or not that can that shift in mentality can rub off on the players and whether that um, confidence that has been lost can be picked up again is is going to be the task. Of course, this is the first time really, and I think it was interesting to say, I saw Stuart Webber probably for the first time in a while, not, not that he doesn't anyway, but it was it was a very noticeable desire, a very noticeable will to try and prove people wrong. And there was a, a fire within him, I felt. Um, and he certainly didn't shirk his responsibility, but he didn't, he didn't also, um, it wasn't keen to essentially, um, I guess, uh, dwell on it, really. He's, he's not keen to dwell on it. He wants to move on. He wants to move the picture on. He wants to change the narrative and, and move that on. And whether or not that can be reflected within a Norwich City squad that will be uh, or will end up most likely with, with the worst points tally of a Norwich City side in the top flight since three points were introduced is going to be very interesting to see how this squad reacts to that. And uh, again, he reiterated that from the club's perspective, from his perspective, Daniel Fark is still the right man to go again. Of course, he won the championship for Norwich City, 94 points. Um, uh, a re- well, essentially... Um, a joint record, isn't it, with Nigel Worthington's side. So, essentially, uh, pinpointed Burnley as an example, which is interesting because they obviously had to come down to the Championship before they went back up to rebuild. That's what he wants in Norwich City. And it's going to be interesting, I think, over the course of the months. But, yes, check out our Stuart Webber interview, uh, pinkin.com, all, uh, the place to go, essentially, for, for all the quotes and all the analysis. Um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll speak about this to come. Obviously, Chelsea tomorrow. Um, so, there's plenty of stuff going on. And um, I would, if I was a Norwich City supporter, I'd, I'd rest assured that there's plenty of stuff going on in the background. It's all going to be about whether they can correct the mistakes they made. And I, and I think Stuart Webber fronted up to them today um, really, really well. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the Pink and YouTube channel as well. We'll have plenty more content coming out, not just from um, Chelsea, Burnley and, and Manchester City, but but also the summer as, as we all look ahead to the new season. Looks like it's going to be a September start, which is um, which is going to be interesting as well. Hopefully, we'll be in a position where we can get fans into into Carrow Road. Um, let's, let's hope that's the case. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you're all staying uh, nice and well. All the best. See you soon.